Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. Dr. Chaps at the Western Conservative Summit, we have a real live candidate for governor of Colorado. My new friend, I just met him, literally just met him, but he's been here a long time. Doug Robinson, welcome to the program. Thank you, Gordon. Great to be here with you. So you're running for governor of Colorado. Why should people vote for you and where did you come from? Well, I've, I've been here in Colorado for 21 years, and uh, choosing a governor is a little bit like choosing the CEO of a business, right? We need to choose that person who is best set to, to really lead our state going forward. I have a vision for Colorado being the best place in the country to live, to work, to raise a family. I want to make that vision a reality. And I think it, it has to do with economic opportunity, education, fixing our roads, and dealing with our drug problem. Those are some of the challenges and opportunities that we need to address in order to build the Colorado of the future. So you mentioned the drug problem. Uh, be more specific because the Colorado voters voted to legalize marijuana, although I strongly oppose that. It's now in the Constitution. What would you do? So I was one of the leaders of the No on 64 campaign. And then once we lost, we kind of cried for a few weeks. There were a lot of other things to cry about in that 2012 election, including losing the, the House in uh, Colorado. Um, but we said, you know, we got to do something about this. It is legal here. So we wanted to protect our kids. So we formed an organization that has been right there around protecting our kids and educating our kids, getting money to go after the black market, trying to uh, have packaging. We limited uh, um, the, uh, the way the edibles were marketed. Uh, Are you talking about Smart size. Colorado? Smart Colorado. Those smart moms were always at the state capitol, and these are bread and butter Republican conservatives who just want to protect their kids. And they want to make sure that candy marijuana for children is not printed in edible format in a confusing way where children are getting high. You're behind that. I applaud you. Yeah, so that was started in my living room. So my wow. wife and I uh, started that, and she was the face of it, and no money, no mission. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I had a significant role in, uh, and, and, and lots of other people too, many great leaders. And I, told, I just spoke, I talked about Bill Armstrong uh, when uh, Amendment 64 was passed. I called up Bill and I said, your leadership is lead needed down at the Capitol. I don't know if you were there, Gordon, but I don't know if you remember. He came down, he said, absolutely. He came down, he talked to those legislators that were understandably weary to, kind of weary to engage on this difficult topic and said, you got to do something. You got to control this. He says, I hate taxes and I hate regulation, but when it comes to vices that are bad for children, tax the hell out of it and regulate the hell out of it. So yeah. that was his view. And, and I remember Bill Armstrong coming to, to brief me when I was a freshman legislator in the State House. He was on target. As the president of Colorado Christian University, as a former U.S. Senator, he loved the Lord Jesus. It informed and motivated everything behind his politics. Talk about your personal faith. What motivates you? Yeah, and just on that, so I was so inspired by Bill Armstrong. Every time I would go to meet with him, he would say, he'd grab my hand and he'd say, can we start with a prayer? And he wow. absolutely lived, he talked about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He did. And He, he gave and me this he, pen. Let me show you saying, this. This pen is the Jesus pen I got from I, Bill I Armstrong. Chills. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and he, not only did he live his faith, but he was public about it. He wasn't afraid to stand up and to say, that in public and yeah. to talk about his faith and how it informed him. And he didn't do it in a way that was discriminatory towards others. He was embracing and compassionate, but he was courageous. So I'm a man of, of, of uh, deep faith. We're not the same denomination, but I believe deeply in, uh, in my heavenly father and, and his son, Jesus Christ, and uh, read the Bible daily, uh, uh, pray and seek for strength. And, and frankly, um, my desire to uh, leave a successful career and so on and seek uh, public service comes from, uh, I think, a calling from, from the Lord to all of us to try to and make your, the world better. Your commitment to your wife, and I assume you have children, talk about them. So yes, Diane, I've been married to her for 29 years, I have five children, uh, and they're all doing great. And uh, we had three of them here today, two were uh, um, not able to join us, they're out of state. Uh, the old, they're 26 to 16, four of them went to Cherry Creek High School. And uh, you know, as, as parents, that's probably the hardest thing that you do, 
is, uh, is raise kids. And uh, we've been fortunate with some great Sunday school teachers and coaches and, and uh, others to, uh, you know, there are th three of my four sons and I'm working on the other are Eagle Scouts. I'm an Eagle Scout. So those things are important in our life. Family is important. Commitment to uh, the woman that you marry, being faithful to her. That's the way I have lived my life. And I'm not saying that everyone else needs to. As governor, you know, you, you're not going to legislate that. You're not going to legislate that. Uh, but, but love is uh, a good thing. But, it, you know, that, that's that's a good thing. And, and uh, uh, faith, family, and freedom. That is what the theme of this conference is. Hey, and I'm, that is, I like this guy. I've just met him, but I'm starting to like him, honestly. Uh, how can you not like someone who values faith, family, and freedom? Talk about your business experience. You said you've been a business leader in the community. Absolutely. So for 27 years, my business experience has been raising money and advising technology businesses and how they should grow. And so I worked for uh, some large companies and then uh, in 2004, a few of us decided that we could do things better on our own. So we took that entrepreneurial risk, started a firm called St. Charles Capital. And uh, we were unique in that we brought that advisory skill set to um, industry, with coupled it with industry expertise. And I, I led our technology practice. We had a banking and a healthcare and a, a manufacturing practice. We became a leading firm here in Denver, and we had the opportunity in 2014, we were approached by some other firms. We ended up selling the firm to KPMG which is a worldwide uh, advisory firm. And so I've, I've started businesses, but fundamentally I've seen, and this is part of my motivation in getting into the race, uh, the change that technology brings for good and for ill into our lives. And uh, I think we're just in the third or fourth inning of this technology revolution. It's gonna change the way we work, live, everything about it. We're gonna have artificial intelligence, robotics, autonomous vehicles, virtual reality, bioscience. We need to make sure that Colorado is a leader. There will be winners and, and losers across the country as, as this uh, change comes about. We need to make sure that Colorado is on the winning side of that and that we use the technology to advance conservative principles and bring people uh, to understand that it's really the Republican Party and the principles of opportunity that lift people up. I agree with everything you're saying so far. This is amazing. But here's the criticism I'm hearing from some of your competitors. Yeah. You know, there's like seven or eight people running for governor by the time there might be 10 Republican candidates. Uh, but some of them are saying, after a recent uh, finance report that, oh, all of his money comes from Utah, he's too close to the, to the Mitt Romney family, uh, he's an outsider. How do you respond to that? So it's interesting that once you lift your head up above the rest, suddenly you get mud thrown at you, right? Yeah. And yeah. so I was a first timer in the race. I don't think people had expectations, didn't know. Yeah. And I raised more money than anybody else. Well done. Uh, significantly more. Wow. And uh, and so uh, people said, oh, wow, maybe we should take him seriously. And so I was criticized. So I, as a first timer, who do you reach out to? But your friends and your family and yeah. people that you know. Yeah. And so I have a brother that lives in Utah. He said, why don't we do a fundraiser over here? So we raised $35,000 in Utah out of 260000 that was raised. And most okay. of that was in Colorado, not in Utah. Over 70% 70, 70 was raised in Colorado. Yeah. 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 So there was, uh, you know, a piece. I mean, I raised money from my family in New York and Florida and North Carolina and other places too. They got a call, my friends. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, being a candidate, oh, yeah. people I went to college with. You know, hey, how you doing? We, we spend a lot of time on the phone, don't you? Yeah. So, so I, I, I was surprised by that because, I, you know, you have to work hard to raise money, and it, and it came from uh, an individual who put a lot of his own money into the race, and. Uh, you know, if that's good for him and so on. I, I'm fortunate that I, I may uh, be able to put quite a bit of money into the race, but I feel like you have to, once you have that discipline of raising money and getting people on board with you, that they're gonna vote for you, they're gonna support yeah. you and so on. And so the Mitt Romney thing, uh, yes, he is my uncle. He's my mom's uh, baby brother. I grew up, uh, you know, in the same family, but he's not my dad, he, you know, I mean, I, we're, we're different people. Yeah. And uh, I was really inspired when I was a teenager, my parents were divorced, and it was my grandfather, George Romney, who came from nothing, uh, was uh, successful in business, ran for governor of Michigan, three-term governor of Your Michigan. grandfather was George Romney, the governor of Michigan? Yes. His yeah. grandfather? 
Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And, he, and didn't he, he was, run for president back in the day? He did. He ran for president in 68. Yeah. And, I, and uh, so he was the one who inspired me. And he believed deeply that you make a success of yourself uh, in the world, your kids are old enough that they're not influenced by the craziness of politics, the false celebrity of office, and so on. And if you can, you try to give back. And that's where my motivation comes from. And so I kind of take these, you know, yes, you know, it's used as a negative that I'm related to Mitt Romney, but you know, I, I think he's a smart guy and, and I'm not him. Uh, yeah. You know, we, we look at things differently. Never but, run yeah. away from your family. Your family is who you are. Yeah. They brought you to where you are and that's just part of you. Exactly, and that's that's who I am, yeah. and uh, you know. But we have different policies and so on. And I hope he's been helpful. He wrote a max check. I got some criticism for that, but uh, <laughs> I called him and said uh, I would have called him too. Hey, <laughs> hey, Uncle, write me a check. Uh, I don't blame you a bit. He but could do that. how can you? differentiate yourself, not from uh, the other people in your family, but from the other candidates that are running for governor. What makes you different? So I'm talking about, and if you go to my website, which is DougForColorado.com, uh, you'll learn about my vision for Colorado. That's why I'm running, is because we don't have a vision today. As a businessman, you have a business plan, you have you know, objectives, where you're trying to go. As Coloradans, they couldn't tell you. Things are actually pretty good right now along the front range and some of the rural areas people are struggling and so on but what do we want this state to look like 10 years from now just transportation for example how are we going to address our transportation challenges do we need another roadway it, should we widen 285 and make that a major highway to the mountains Colorado do Springs we, uh, wants a three lane both way I-25 from Castle Rock to Monument will you make a commitment that you'll widen I-25 yes in the first year that will happen <laughs> That is absolutely, and every time hey, I go... that's a big deal in my neighborhood. Every time I go to Colorado Springs or Pueblo or Rocky Ford this last week, I sit in that traffic, and it yeah. is absolutely... This has been an issue for, since, you know, for 10 years, and that we haven't been able to come up with the money to fix that. It's not even as challenging as I-70. We don't have the right-of-way or the, the mountain walls pressing in. We've got access roads on both sides of that highway. We're going to get that done in the first year. We're going to have that widened, yeah. and uh, and I think you look maybe at some uh, across the state some public private initiatives. Some of those are working well in terms of uh, you know private companies sharing some of the risks, some of the costs, some of the expense. I look at the, our transportation issues to the mountains. Who benefits from all of us going up there? The ski companies and all of those. They should t uh, part to you know be. Uh, part of this discussion, this solution in terms of how do we pay for this. Uh, last question, uh, and then I'll let you mention your website again. I notice your pin. It has the American flag and the Israeli flag. Why do you support Israel? You know, I had a remarkable opportunity a year and a half ago to go with some of your uh, fellow uh, colleagues, uh, Jerry Sonnenberg, Chris Holbert, um, and their wives and, and uh, some Democrats, I won't mention their names, but uh, to, to Israel. And, um, you know, Israel, when you, as a, as a Christian, when you go to the actual places where Jesus walked, when you sit at the Sea of Galilee and you see where he called Peter and James and said, I will make you fishers of men. Uh, it brings tears to your eyes and, and to, uh, to be there where the uh, Sermon on the Mount were, you know, right there where it was. I, it, was a, it was a deeply faith-promoting thing for me. But aside from that, I also became very impressed with the can-do attitude of the uh, Israeli people. They have this attitude, like the world's against them and they're going to get things done. They come together, they're friendly, and we have a, a commitment, a biblical commitment to Israel that we need to honor. And uh, so I'm proud to wear uh, my uh, American Israel flag. I, I said it was the last question, but I got to ask you about uh, Second Amendment and pro-life. Where do you draw the line? So Second Amendment, I believe in the inspired nation of, uh, nature of the Constitution. Second Amendment is a core piece of our Constitution. Okay. We have the constitutional, God-given right, I believe, to defend ourselves and our families. Okay, and pro-life, when does life begin? So, so I have been always pro-life and I uh, believe deeply in the, in the divine nature of uh, individuals. I do believe in exceptions. Uh, I believe in uh, exception in the case of incest and rape and uh, the life of the mother, but uh, have always been strongly pro-life. There you go. Our guest has been Doug Robinson. Mention your website one more time. 
Doug, D-O-U-G, F-O-R, Doug4Colorado.com. Please go and check us out and, and uh, sign up to volunteer or throw a party or uh, give, us, give us money. <laughs> <laughs> He's running for governor of Colorado. I'm Dr. Chaps. We'll be right back. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org. How is your marriage doing? I want to tell you about an exciting new four-part video DVD Bible study series on God's plan for marriage. In this video series, we team up with marriage and family ministry expert, Vince Dacchioli. There are a lot of things that get in the way of our ability to have a healthy marriage. But with the way God intended it, He always wanted us to see His view of our relationship together. So everything we do when we talk about marriage or whether we're talking to men or whether we're talking to pastors and leaders, it all centers around this idea of vision. It's very important that we understand who God is and our relationship with Him is right in order for us to be able to live out really and truly Ephesians. And that also informs our role as men, how to love our wives. We can't really exactly. love them unless we understand the love of God. Exactly. So if you just think about love, you, we tend to think that love is an emotion. It's more uh, something that I feel, whereas the true definition of love, the way Jesus intended it, is, is not just an emotion, but it's, it's, a, it's charity, it's what I do. You know, to the degree that I am able to see my wife or my spouse through his eyes, that determines everything in my relationship. Yeah. And we go through the scriptures in four different parts. Part one is God's design for man and woman. Part two is godly roles for husband and wife. Three is sex and intimacy within godly marriage. And also God's plan for divorce. You wanna have this important four part video series available for a suggested donation of $30 if you call our toll free prayer line at 866 Obey God. Again, that's 866 O B E Y G O D. Or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. You too can have a godly marriage. He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Chaps at the Western Conservative Summit here in Denver, Colorado, interviewing a candidate for governor of Colorado. We have a Republican. His name is Steve Barlock. Welcome, sir, to the program. Thank you very much. So I'm so honored to meet you. We've met uh, uh, a few weeks ago. I had Nigel Farage was event. Well, why are you running for governor? Well, you know, when people say if you want something done, you, you should go out and do it yourself. Being a Colorado native of fifth generation, um, Coloradan, um, we go all the way back in the 1860s to Central City. When I saw that a two families from political dynasties were starting to run um, or announced they were considering or we know, meaning the, the Bush family with uh, uh, Stapleton, uh, Walker Stapleton and uh, the Romney family with Greg Robinson. Um, I don't believe in having that monarchy give castles to all the family and all the children. Um, such as Colorado should money. be for natives and not for big money outsiders. Uh, it shouldn't be for, you know, it's not just natives. I'm, I'm happy my grandfather came here from the old country. He came here from Slovakia. He had stopped off in Illinois and had a battle with the KKK and uh, his, his uh, general store got burned down. So he moved out to Golden, the house that just uh, became on the National Registry on Old Golden Road. Um, they moved out there, opened up a general store on Fox Farm, and he still had some problems with the uh, Democratic KKK out here. He was a staunch Republican, and he had five sons. He adopted two on the way, um, way through Missouri. And I, I'm very, very happy for um, all the proper lessons my uh, grandfather taught my, my family, and that has been passed down to me. Um, we were lifelong independents, and I don't mean the independent party, I mean unaffiliated voters. 
when they formed the independent party and called us unaffiliated voters, I sort of felt that was a slap in the face. It doesn't make a person feel like they're an individual anymore. And uh, we were independents because we did business with both Democrats and Republicans and didn't want to cause controversy because of the history my grandfather had with both parties. He was a staunch Republican, but he, he lost business um, because of that. So he told, he told my family a good life lesson. He goes, just be happy and honest and faithful in what you do. And, and, and you don't have to be on either party. Are you a first-time candidate? I am a first-time candidate. Actually, last year I, I just became a first-time Republican for my life. I, I was able to uh, go to my first caucus and go all the way through the system and become an alternate delegate to the National Convention um, for Donald Trump. Well, let's talk about that for a second. Yeah, you're now a Republican running for governor against the big establishment Republicans. You mentioned the Bush family has a candidate, the Romney family has a candidate, but you are an independent. You're a politically, you know, your background at least, as you described, and, and, and you supported Donald Trump. How did that go? It is. Well, I always, I was always had conservative values on my side as an independent. You don't have to label yourself a Republican to be a conservative. And I was very happy to, when Donald Trump came over, that it was a different outlook. It wasn't this political dynasty that came out. It was a, it was a builder that wanted to reach, reach the party and grow the tent. I believe in reaching the, the party and growing a tent. I also believe that there's a lot of uh, points of view that some Republicans uh, are very strong for and others are not. But we, we have to be a large tent and accepting to everybody, um, just like in religion. You know, you, you accept everybody because that's God's plan. You know, it, it, we all have to live on this planet that God provided us and, and enjoy it and bring happiness to each other. I, I don't like misery. I really don't. And I think we have some miserable candidates. So I stepped up and said, if why, why not be part of the solution? And, and Donald Trump has created this movement throughout the nation that I believe we can continue in Colorado and help make everybody all in for Colorado. When, I, when I'm worried about the globalists, I'm worried about these corporations that come in, are given special government deals to pay less taxes than any other corporation, even if they compete with them. And then the money doesn't end up in Colorado. Their profits go somewhere else, sometimes across seas. You look at Boulder Turnpike, who owns that? We all know it's, a, it's a, one of the Scandinavian countries that, that own our roads and made it a toll road. So I'm not very happy with how the Democrats have, have turned our, our state, what they've turned our state into. And I, I really think a, a person who believes in Donald Trump can help him help our state become great again. So I'm observing that historically Colorado had been a red state, con conservative, sort of Republican. But recently, it, you know, we've had the Californians move in. Uh, not enough Texans, honestly. We need more Texans to come to Colorado. But all, the, now it's a blue state. In other words, Democrat leaning. Democrats control the state House of Representatives by a, a ridiculous <laughs> margin. Um, what would you do to bring independence into the Republican Party as part of your candidacy? For 108, I'm very happy 108 passed, um, which gives the, gives the right. Explain for, what that means. Which which gives the right for a um, a independent, unaffiliated voter to vote in a primary of their choice. They can either vote on the Republican ticket, or or the Democratic ticket, or a third party ticket. But they have the right for being unaffiliated to vote to choose who they hope will become the next um, in a Republican primary in a Republican primary now we still have not there's 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 whispers that we're still gonna pull out as a Republican Party and not not have a primary um, and I think that would be the end of the Republican Party in Colorado um, it's not what the voters wanted to Republicans independents and Democrats all voted for this this proposition 108 and I believe we need to stand on it as Republicans we need to reach out and grow the party like Donald Trump did there's a reason I'm in this party not just my conservative beliefs but there's a reason I, I came over here and that's because of Donald Trump and there's a I have I've been told by people that, well, Donald Trump's just a man. No one man can make America great. No president, no senator. And I agree with that statement. No one man can. But the movement of millions of people behind that one man can make a change. And that's what Donald Trump has. Millions of people behind him supporting this change. And, and when you talk about trillions and trillions of dollars, such as in the health system, of course they're going to fight back against what he wants, which is the best for the American people. So while Proposition 108 and open primaries 
may not be best for Republican platform it's purity. It may be better to bring independents like you into the Republican Party in the long run. I really believe it's a way to grow. And, and you can't just shove your values down somebody's throat. You have to open up to them. You have to let them have an opportunity to explore. And 108 is going to give a, a lot of opportunity for independent thinking people to explore the Re Republican Party. Uh, any thoughts with the first uh, six months of the Donald Trump presidency. How's he doing? I think he's doing fantastic. I saw a list of all the accomplishments. The number one list is the conservative, uh, uh, number one thing on the list, of course, is the conservative Neil Gorsuch to the Supreme Court. And Neil was a schoolmate of mine at Christ the King, where I, I we both had our... Colorado native? Uh, Colorado native. Um, I, I was classmates with his younger brother, JJ, and I appreciate the education Christ the King gave us and, and the moral background we received from that. So I can ensure America that, that Neil Gorsuch is a great, great conservative and Donald Trump could have picked no one better. I'm so proud he picked him. Now, another candidate, Victor Mitchell, voted against Donald Trump. He voted for McMillan from Utah. He admits that freely. He's proud of that. By him voting against Donald Trump, it was a vote for Hillary Clinton. And Mr. Mitchell could have put a liberal on the Supreme Court and hurt conservative values for decades. You hear that, Victor Mitchell? You should be coming on this program. By the way, I'm not endorsing either candidate, but come on this program and, and Give your answer to that. Uh, Steve Barlock, I'm so glad to meet you and to have you on our program. Uh, what's your website? Well, it's barlockforgovernor.com, and we have the uh, SMP as one of my uh, mission statements. S is for signatures. We will need volunteers to get those signatures so I can get on our ballot in the primary. We need M is for money. We do need money for gas so I can go all around the state and meet great Colorado voters. And, and P is for press. So I thank you very much for helping fulfill the press part. I don't know if I helped you all that much, but you will get a hearing. I'm so glad to honor. It's great to meet you. I wish you all the best. Pleasure to meet you. Always good luck with your show. All right. I'm Dr. Chaps. We'll be right back. Today I want to invite you to sign an important petition to Congress to protect military chaplains, especially their right to pray publicly in Jesus' name. If you remember my story, you know that I was vindicated by Congress in 2006 after I took a principled stand for the right to pray in Jesus' name. But Congress never did pass a positive law to let chaplains pray according to their conscience. Would you sign that petition with me? Let's take action today. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.